one. Jim has disappeared, but that's okay. We're still here. Although the wildebeest are very clearly keen not to be. Was it something I said? I don't understand. I mean, I haven't showered yet this morning because I got up pretty early, but I didn't think I was that bad. I don't know what's going on. There's absolute chaos. They've all dashed off in opposite directions. There's chaos everywhere I look in that direction. Okay, there's some groups calming down now. Then all of a sudden everybody started sprinting in every direction. They're still sprinting in every direction a bit further back. Now somewhere, I would guess, would be a lion that instigated this. But as to where said lion might be, nobody knows, because they end up in this flat panic. The herd's just here running, and they run too, which I suppose makes sense. You know, when in doubt, follow the rest of the group in case they know something you don't. Bye. It was nice to see you. Back towards the Mara River. You'd think they'd have had enough of that place. I wish I knew. I wish I had a greater understanding of exactly what drives them. We talk about food availability, but I don't know what, what causes this. What makes one of them decide, okay, it's time to go? And they're all doing it. Further back as well, if we look a little bit further towards there, at the back there, everybody's going. Must have been something I said. <laughs> and this is why <laughs> we end up... One day you know where the herds are, the next day they've all vanished. You have to find them all again. Hmm. Huh. Now which way to go? Which way to go indeed? There's more coming still. Look at this. In sheer numbers. Everybody trying to contact call to their lost family members. Poor things. And what fascinates me is there's one or two individuals that are just sort of standing there going, eh, nah. We'll, we'll just stay where we are, thanks. The grass is quite nice here. Oh, I'm sorry, Lou. What are you trying to tell me? Here we go. I unplugged myself again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sinatra would like to know if zebra have stripes because they don't want to be spotted. Very good, Sinatra, very good. They have... Stripes, yes, well, one of the reasons is because they don't want to be spotted. They don't want to be singled out. And the stripes help to essentially make the entire group of zebras blend in together as one unit. Just by the way, I double-checked myself because there was something ringing bells in the back of my mind, which is why I didn't immediately munch into the sausage fruit, apart from all of the insects. Don't eat raw sausage fruit. It is strongly purgative, and that would have led to a very, very boring safari for all of you because I would have been on my way back home at high speed. You've got to ferment them or roast them or do something. They've got to be well prepared. You cannot consume them without preparing them properly. Most of the uses for sausage fruit is for a beverage, not for children under 16, 18 or 21, depending upon where you happen to be. Okay, I don't know whether to follow the wildebeest. They're now panicking off in the opposite direction. Hmm. The most astounding scenes out here. I don't think it's easy to convey exactly what the numbers are like, even through the eyes of the camera, and obviously this is the, the next best thing to being here. Even through the eyes of the camera, I don't know that it's possible to convey the sense of scale. What the landscape looks like when it's just dotted with little black shapes everywhere. Very cool. Okay, 
onwards and upwards towards the sausage tree pride. I think we've had quite enough of the fruit. Oh, Lauren, let's, okay. Whoa. I might have to switch to my wind safe hat. Lauren, let's stop here so we can have a look at the wildebeest to answer your question, which is, what is the difference between the wildebeest here and on Juma? Just waiting for that car to move ahead of us. The answer to that, Lauren, is they're the same species as the ones that you see on Juma. They have white beards, which the ones on Juma do not, and obviously occur in much larger numbers, which essentially means that their behavior is very different. You don't get the same focus on a territory in the way that you do with male wildebeest in the Sabi sand. The wildebeest here, they migrate. Well, that means that they've kind of got to let go of the idea of a permanent territory and gather together their harem and just hope that they don't lose any members during the migration, which they do on a regular basis. So it's a lot more chaotic. And that's, by the way, the people that are folding up the balloon. That's not them scaring the wildebeest, though. That, I don't know what that was about. There's still another stream of them arriving from Tanzania. Oh, and we're off again. I think I'm going to go have a look around and see if I can spot what's been spooking the wildebeest. Let's go back across to Hasano, who probably wouldn't know what to do with himself in the middle of this.